A lot of people don't know the difference between a psychiatric service animal and an emotional support animal. I myself found myself asking this question a few years back when I was in my senior year of holiday school. What is the difference? I was in a state where my mental health was declining and I thought it would be beneficial to know. And during my research that took me months, I found out there's three distinctions. There's restrictions, there's regulations, and there's benefits that come to owning either animal. Now, a PSA, or psychiatric service animal, is typically any dog breed that is trained to perform tasks for those who have neurological, psychological impairments or traumas. And these dogs have a lot more restrictions than the emotional support animals. A psychiatric service dog, or a PSA, they have to be trained in uh, tasks such as turning on lights in the room. They could be trained to do deep pressure therapy on the body to help you relax, or just anything else that'll help make your daily life more tolerable. This training for these tasks can cost tens of thousands of dollars. And it's actually very difficult for people to obtain PSAs because it's so difficult. When it comes to the regulations regarding these dogs, it can't just be any animal that you find on the street. It has to be a dog or anything that can just be in the general public. When it comes to regulations, they can board planes and such, but they have to stay near you. They can't go and wandering about just saying hello to everyone. The dog has to know to listen to you and follow you. The dog cannot sit there with your significant other and get distracted and want the attention of your significant other. The dog has to be trained and regulated to follow your regime. The benefits that come with the psychiatric service dog are the tasks it provides. The dog knows how to help you with the lights. As I said before, it knows how to do deep pressure therapy. These dogs are typically better trained. They will walk better down the street. They won't get distracted by a squirrel. And generally, they're just overall a better pet because they are working. When it comes to a PSA, they're typically more strict with everything overall. When it comes to an ESA, however, the regulations are a little bit more lax. These can be, um, they can be dolphins, strangely enough. They can be dogs or cats. There have even been instances where people have had emotional support horses, strangely enough. Um, these animals with their rip, uh, restrictions, they aren't allowed to go everywhere. They usually are only allowed in your house. They're allowed only in your own property and then in the immediate vicinity where they have to use the restroom. Some airplanes and different airports will allow you to carry your ESA with you, but most of the time they are with the other animals. They also aren't required to have all the intense training. The only real thing that you have to make sure that you take care of with an ESA is that they won't damage the household that they are put into. And when it comes to an ESA, they are typically not as beneficial. The only real benefit that an ESA needs to bring you is an emotional support boost. They have to make you feel like you want to go outside and see the world and just act like a normal human being. Overall, having an ESA is a little bit more lax. When it comes to having a psychiatric service animal, things tend to be a little bit more strict. There's stricter regulations, but there's a lot more benefits and there's a lot less restrictions because they've been trained and they know how to perform tasks and just be in the general public without being a nuisance. When it comes to an ESA, on the other hand, they're more lax with their restrictions, but they also have less benefits and there's more restrictions.
they haven't been really trained or acclimated to the rest of society. It's more of just a house pet that focuses on you and your own happiness. So when it comes to choosing what animal you want to take into your home, whether it be a PSA or an ESA, there's costs to consider. Which one, how much do you need to be benefited? And just choose what works for you.